All right, so if you clicked onto this video, you're probably looking for some harsh advice. And I'm going to do my best to give that to you, whether or not that you actually want to hear this advice. And while this advice is for sort of cooked, I guess, CS grads, this really applies to computer science students, even high school students or anybody else who feels like they're kind of stuck in life and not really where they want to be. And again, this is probably gonna be pretty harsh advice that you might not wanna hear, but I actually think it's pretty helpful. And so I would consider listening carefully. The first thing that you need to realize, whether or not you like it, is that you have complete agency over your life. And the sooner that you realize this, the sooner you're gonna realize that you need to start doing things that are good for you and for your future. This is something that I have always internalized, I think, or at least from a pretty early age, I always felt like I had control over my actions and my future. But this is a mentality that you really need to adopt if you're interested in accomplishing almost anything in life. You need to realize that nobody is coming to save you. You have family, you have friends, but ultimately your life is your own responsibility. And I'm sure that you feel like there's many disadvantages that you might have, and that's fair. And there's many other people who probably have it way better than you. But similarly, there's also many other people who have it way worse too. And while that's probably harsh to hear and a little bit annoying or frustrating, it really is the truth. And even if you just play the odds game here. I think it really makes sense to sort of optimistically think about this as opposed to pessimistically think like this. It will fare better and I think life will fare better for you if you just believe that the inputs that you have and that you can pull on, all the levers that you can pull on, all the actions and stuff that you can do lead to some result at some point in the future and your input directly affect those outputs, I think is a thing that you should just inherently believe. I think it is an optimistic outlook and I think if you look at it from a pessimistic perspective, it kind of just gives you zero incentive to do anything and just lays around all day. So it really doesn't do any good for you. So if you feel like you're cooked or like you're not in a good position, the first step to actually getting out of that position, especially like if you're a computer science graduate, let's say looking for a job or you feel like, you know, you wasted your four year degree or something. This is the first and most important step probably, because if you don't do this, you can't pass go. If you don't believe that any of the inputs and levers that you can pull on, change any of the you know potential outcomes, you really are cooked. So you need to believe that you have agency in your life. And that is the number one most important thing that you have to actually start doing and realize. The next thing that you need to do is that once you believe that you have agency, and once you internalize that you control your life, you need to start taking action. And this is something that I think school does not teach you. School tells you that here's an assignment to do, it's due by Tuesday. Here's a test that you have to do well on or a midterm and it's, start, you know, it's in November, it's on the 15th of November at 2 p.m. Spoon feeding is not good. You need to realize that you have to take action and whatever the actions that you put in, right? That's probably gonna correlate in some way to the results that you get or the things that you're able to achieve. And again, now that you believe that you have agency, you're gonna take action in your life to actually get to where you wanna be. And so you need to think really hard about what are the things that you want out of life? What are the things that you wanna be able to accomplish or do? And you should probably realize that if you want some sort of crazy outlandish return or some really cool, amazing achievement that's very hard to get to, well, your inputs in the action that you put in really have to match that, or at least it has to be correlated somehow. It's not realistic to think that you could put in normal inputs and get outsized returns. That's just not really how it works. If you want the fruit, you have to go out on a limb, right? That's, that's just how life works. So figure out what your goals are and then index actually on taking action to be able to do that. And then I think, especially here, I think a lot of people get into these modes of thinking. I'm going to plan, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna come up with you know, how exactly I'm gonna do this step by step. But I think what you're gonna realize once you start taking action is that one hour of action is probably worth at least 10 hours of thinking. The reality is that you're never going to have all your ducks in a row. There's gonna be something that you wanna do and chances are the best thing that you can do to accomplish that thing is just start chipping away at that thing. If you spend 10 hours thinking, you're not actually going to get that far. And chances are, once you start actually climbing towards that goal, you're gonna realize, let's say, the second step that you had in your sort of recipe or equation is gonna get thrown out the window. Once you start doing the thing, you start realizing more and more how little you can actually plan for a lot of the stuff that you need to do or accomplish. It's almost like if you wanted to become a professional basketball player, let's say, at some point reading books about basketball aren't going to do you any good. You can learn about the rules, you can learn about maybe techniques that might help you, but you're never gonna become a professional basketball player if you never dribble, if you never take shots, if you never play in a real game. And at some point, you just need to start indexing on action. You have to start doing things that are good for you that actually move the needle, okay? So that's the next thing that you need to do sort of here in this recipe. The third thing I think here as well 
is that you have to realize that life isn't linear or you shouldn't think about life in a linear way. Um, you need to try to move from A to Z as quickly as possible. In school, a lot of times, especially I think CS schools, they teach you a lot about moving from A to B to C to D to E and so on and so forth. You take one class that's an intro class and then you take a data structures class and then you take this other class and you shouldn't think about that because what that's actually doing is it's breaking your life out into these chunks that you have to dedicate to this one specific thing and they're sort of determining how fast you can move, right? You and maybe like the three other hundred, 300 other people that I had in my intro to CS lecture all had to move at the same pace because that's what they decided. But that's not how you should look at your life, especially once you're out of school, you should realize that any steps that you can skip or however fast you can make progress towards your end goal, you should really do that. And in the name of that, you should again, index on action and you should try to ask for forgiveness, not permission. Something I wish I learned earlier in my career, in my general life, is that you should take action on things and then deal with some of the aftermath. If something you know goes wrong or you made a small mistake, and this is not to say you should blow up your life and do anything crazy, controversial or problematic, but you should actually index on action and do things that you think are gonna help move you faster to that, that finish line, whatever that thing is that you want, that shiny object at the end of this giant race we call life, and figure out how you can move fastest towards that. You will make mistakes, you will fall and scrape your knee, you'll have to get back up and figure it out, but you should ask for forgiveness, not permission. If you ask for permission, I've realized a lot of times, people bog you down and they tell you why you can't do things and that just slows your momentum. So index on doing that stuff, okay? And a lot of the steps that you're gonna sort of move through, again, if like A is where you are and Z is where you wanna be, just metaphorically speaking, you're gonna realize that C or F or G or L might be completely optional and you might not need that thing. So don't think that you have to, you know, fit into this one size fits all thing for society, that every single person who wants to do exactly what you've done has followed this sort of routine standard path. And a lot of times that's not true. You can't perfectly reverse engineer, I think, how you, you know, do something that's worthwhile or worth achieving. So you need to take everybody's advice, even this, right, with a grain of salt and figure out really what works best for you. But just try to make sure you're moving as quickly as possible, that you have the highest possible velocity to get to where you wanna be. And I think a lot of you might feel a little bit lost and that's completely normal. I felt very lost, especially coming out of school because I didn't really know if I wanted to be a software engineer. And I even got laid off uh, after eight months in my first job and that really sort of disillusioned me to the field and what I wanted to do. But zoom out, think higher level. You don't just want a job, let's say. Why do you want a job? Okay, well, I wanna make a certain amount of money. Why do I wanna make a certain amount of money? Well, I want a certain amount of stability. Why don't I currently have stability? And if you keep following this path, you will realize a couple things. One thing you might realize is that, wow, the goal that I had or the thing that I was originally trying to do is not a good idea and it'll allow you to reroute and sort of give you like a better uh, way to get to where you wanna be without hopefully 20 years of heartache realizing that you've, you know, eventually get to that point and realize you, you had a bad goal. Or it'll make you realize that, okay, if this is actually the thing that I want, I could probably circumvent the first two steps or maybe this middle portion and it'll allow you to just to move faster to that goal. So you really need to do that. Find the most efficient path, find the displacement between A and Z. Don't feel like you have to take every single intermediary step the way that a lot of times like society has conditioned you to think that and especially probably your CS degree has made you think with like prerequisites for classes and things of that nature. You also have to accept Again, you're not gonna like it, but life is not fair. Life will never be fair. Again, we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but there's many people who you know, feel extremely disadvantaged. And I sympathize with you and I feel bad if that's how you feel, but the reality is that feeling bad for yourself, for better or for worse, it's not going to make the, the sun come out from behind the clouds. It's not gonna make you feel better. It's not gonna make any difference in your life if you just keep sitting and sulking and feeling bad for yourself. At some point, you have to pick yourself up dust yourself off and realize that the only way for me to make action or to, to take action in my life is to take action, right? If nothing changes, nothing changes. That sounds ridiculous, but it really is true. So life is not fair. There's gonna be times where things are good, where things are bad, where things go well, where things don't. Right now, a lot of people think that the market is really bad. I think that that might be true empirically, like if you look at data, but you shouldn't think that because the market is bad, I can't get a job. I don't really think there's a such thing as a bad market. I think that there's just people who aren't marketable. 
Okay. If you're good enough at what you do, there's always a seat at the table for you at someone's table, right? Someone will always take you in. Someone will always give you a job. Your goal shouldn't be to get a job because it's a good market, right? You're not tricking anyone to give you a job. You're trying to develop the skills and the know-how and the, the technical prowess really to be able to say, you should give me a job. And then many people want to do that. So don't think that life is unfair uh, or really accept that life is unfair because it is unfair. And so there's many people who have it better than you. And there's also many people who have it worse than you. Chances are, if you're watching this video right now, you're probably watching it at 1080p on some device that can connect to high speed internet and handle way too much JavaScript that YouTube's serving you right now. So again, you might not be sort of like standing on the totem pole or standing on the podium, so to speak, but you're definitely not like watching from the nosebleeds either. So just take that into account and remember and accept life is not fair. And then the final thing to realize here in the maybe my biggest piece of advice is just to realize that good things take time. If you would have told me that after I'd gotten laid off, I think eight months into my first job, I would have believed you, but it would have been like a little bit hard to just take your word for it. And, I, and that might be the case for you too, even watching this video, but it might connect with you later. You know, you might need to sort of di digest this information and chew on this, but this is really true. Rome wasn't built in a day. Anything worth having, uh, anything worthwhile in life achieving or, or worth having doesn't come overnight. So you shouldn't think that it's a surprise that, you know, at some point you're going to struggle. Um, and also like the movie wouldn't be that interesting, right? The movie that is life wouldn't be that interesting if everything went according to plan. If the, if the guy got the girl within the first 15 minutes of the movie, you wouldn't need to sit there for an hour and a half and deal with all the ups and downs, right? So I, I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but it's really true. Like you just have to realize that a lot of things that are worth having come from working at stuff super diligently even when you can't see uh, the result or the reward immediately. There's this famous study called the marshmallow experiment where two kids have to sit. And basically like the person who, or the kid who was able to sit longer and wait to get the marshmallow, like delay their gratification were people who ended up doing like better things in life. And I think that's the mentality you need to have. Even if you can't see the direct effects of what you're doing today, you'll see them eventually. It might be in a month, it might be in a year, but just know like the things that you're doing are worthwhile and they're worth having. And sometimes you just have to keep your nose to the grindstone and do the work in day in and day out when you might not be seeing the results that you really want. And I think a great example of this is the gym, right? No matter how many bicep curls you do today, your biceps aren't gonna double in size by the time you wake up tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's just not how it works. And, and a lot of things in life are like that, but that doesn't mean that they're not worth doing or worth having. So again, this is a lot of sort of harsh advice. I hope it didn't fall on deaf ears. I hope that you're gonna take some of this to heart at least a little bit. Think about this, chew on it, and let me know what you think in the comments. But again, this is some advice that I definitely wish that I had heard, especially if I was sort of this cooked CS graduate coming out of college.